Hello! Today we're going to be learning how we can dump IPA files from our iDevice so that we can do some reverse engineering, some uh, static analysis of the IPA file. We're going to be using Frida iOS dump, which decrypts the IPA and basically pulls it uh, from, from the device to, to our computer. And if you don't already know, IPA files are by default, they, they they come encrypted. All apps that are in store, uh, installed by the App Store are encrypted with, uh, I believe it's called FreePlay. This is the algorithm that was originally used to encrypt um, iTunes uh, so songs downloaded from iTunes to, to prevent piracy. But it's kind of been uh, changed a little bit so that it could also apply to apps that are installed. And if I haven't already explained, um, IPA files, you can see we got some IPAs here are just zip files they they contain when we can just uh check them out they contain you know di uh directories that have necessary files and and uh property lists or, or p lists and images that are the actual um pictures on the app and whatnot and if we look through all of this eventually we're going to find a file that's named uh, after the app itself and this is going to be the binary that actually makes that, that's actually written in either objective c or in swift uh, that makes all the calls to all the all the properties and all the configurations that allows the app to actually work right um this is what we're going to be tossing into ghidra so that we can then look for uh potentially vulnerable strings things like api keys things like embedded user credentials for like third-party accounts or something uh even in some cases like restful api endpoints may even be embedded into a uh the app's binary and these kinds of things would be helpful going when going forward into a dynamic analysis when you start you know proxying your uh phone's traffic through a proxy like burp or zap or something and just start messing around with the web application version a uh, uh, portion of the app so anyway to get us started we've already jailbroken our device here what we got to do first on our phone is install open SSH so that we can just you know log into our uh, device and just have remote access so on the front page of Cydia you're gonna see um, open SSH access how to you can just click that and you can go to the open SSH button there Press open here and I already have it installed but I'm just gonna reinstall so we can, we can see what that looks like And that's pretty much it um, from here um, yeah I should be able to just uh, SSH into my device from here your default password is going to be Alpine um, so you may want to change that and you if you if you don't know like basic POSIX type uh, commands you're gonna be typing password right and then you're going to enter in the new password that you want to use because pretty much anyone who knows how to uh jailbreak a phone is going to know that you can uh if you have ssh if they if they see that port 22 is open on your device they're going to be able to ssh into it right so from here if if that's already interesting enough that we already have remote access in our um iphone uh you can just learn how the internals of the device work uh from here but let's just continue on um, just installing what's necessary for us to pull a, a um, app from the device. So from here, we're going to uh, just um, git clone the repository of free to iOS dump. And then just gonna cd into the directory and we're gonna install all our requirements right we got pip install dash r requirements.txt dash dash upgrade i'm already root so i don't i don't need to add sudo 
And you can see I've already got all the requirements installed. From here, what you're going to install is iProxy and USB MuxD. And you can install those via apt. We can see that when we search for USB MuxD, it's just going to be, yeah, the package USB MuxD. So we can do apt install USB MuxD. We've already got it. If we apt search iProxy, it's going to be under lib USD, a USB MuxD tools. So app install hello that's not correct at all <laughs> and there we go um from here what you're gonna do is run iproxy 222222 basically we're proxying um port 2002 uh, 2222 to uh, port 22 so that we can then just have um, like the USB connected and be able to pull IPAs off of the uh, phone itself, right? And we're just adding the AND so we can run in the background so we can continue to have access to the shell here. Um, from here, we're gonna make, we're gonna want to have whatever app we wanna pull off the device running at the time. And let's see. Yeah, we're already in the directory, so what I'm going to do is Python 3, and let's just run the dump, right? And these are the arguments we're going to provide. We're going to use the uh, tag H to get the IP of the uh, device that we're trying to connect to. Oop. Dash H. I believe that was, uh, hold on. 239, yeah. Um, 10, 0, 0, 239. And we're going to want to have the dash U for the username. It's going to be root dash capital P for the password. I'm putting it in quotes because I have a special character in there. Hello? Uh, and from here, I believe we're going to want to have the name of the app that we're trying to pull. So let me just run Frida PS. That should be. DVIA V2. Unable to open port. Ah, I haven't specified a port. That is the problem. So then we have to add a lowercase p port 22. There we go. And we're just pulling the. We're decrypting the app and then we're downloading it onto the device. I believe into the current directory. done from here you we can see that we got a uh, iv2 ipa and we could just unzip that and check everything out but i've already got it here i could go to where you at here we go this was the one i wanted to use i wanted to use the swift version um from here i'm just gonna start up ghidra Ghidra is a, it's a fairly uh, straightforward install. The only slightly annoying thing would be uh, finding the correct version of Java that you would need to install. But even that is pretty much it, that that's that's already covered in the docs. So from here, I've created a new project. Again, if you if you don't know much about Ghidra, you would go to new project. You choose the directory that you want it to be in. Once you've created your new project, you would go to import file to choose the binary that you want to import. I've already imported the binary here. And you just double click on it. It goes into the uh, code browser. 
and I believe I've also um, analyzed it. I did this all beforehand because it can take a while to analyze uh, uh, Mac OS binaries and uh, iPhone binaries, whatever. Um, so from here, things that I would start to look for. So we would go to the search option, we go to program text. Things I would start to look for would be API underscore key, right? And I'd look for the, uh, we'd be searching for the comments and the labels, right? Everything else, you could, you could select everything. That's just going to take a super long time though. That wasn't particularly bad, but it didn't come up with anything, which is actually good. But uh, for, for the purpose of demonstration, it's a little underwhelming. So to give you guys another idea of how we could do this, we could unzip the IPA file because it is literally just a zip file, right? And now you can see we have a payload directory here. So if we cd into that payload directory, now we have the DBIA v2 app. Let's uh, cd into there. And now we should have the binary right here. So let's just run strings on that and pipe that into less. And because we're in less, we can use the uh, forward slash as a search operator. So from here we could do like API key. And it says pattern not found. And that's a little bit of a more straightforward or I guess more uh, less specified way of searching the binary just for strings and see if those strings exist within the file. So other things we could be searching for could be like username. You can do search all. And that came up with a bunch of stuff, right? And that's going to be a lot that we have to look through. Things like this could be interesting if, because it's put in quotes. And I'm already seeing what looks like a kind of... Well, it says that it's a shared cookie, but it kind of looks like a password to me. But it most likely is not. It's potentially of, of interest, though these kinds of strings and stuff. We can also see that it has URLs uh, hard-encoded into the binary. These are potentially things of interest. I don't think we could really use this in this instance, but it may. when you find something like this in an actual app that's uh, downloaded from the App Store, it may be of interest to you. Other things you could look for would be password, right? And or, or, or like I said before, um, RESTful API endpoints. A RESTful API endpoint is generally going to start with a forward slash API, forward slash, and like a version. So it would be like V1 or V2 or V3, right? I will just do like forward slash API, forward slash V, right? And that, they'll just leave it open to any other results. So nothing came up there. So let's even try just all fields, right? That's going to take a super long time, so let's um, try this in less, right? API V. Nothing. Okay. So, that's just to give you guys a general idea of how we could be looking through the binary to find potentially interesting information before we then go into the dynamic analysis of an app. Um. Maybe we'll do the, the dynamic analysis next, but uh, yeah, this is basically just a way you can do, you can pull apps from your phone without needing a Mac, which is generally the barrier to entry. And that's because of that barrier to entry that sometimes iOS uh, developers or, or app developers for iOS will leave uh, embedded sensitive strings in their binary because they're just under the, they, they're working under the presumption that it's much more safe of a uh, environment. It's less likely to be reverse engineered as opposed to Android app developers where the, you know it takes no effort. You could just do ADB pull and then you've pulled the, the app from, from an Android phone. So anyway, there you go. Hopefully that's, that's uh, enough to, to keep you busy until the next video.